this presentation is to basically give you an overview on what we have learned uh, from HackMotion's data over the years. And uh, most of the things that we've learned is actually uh, from data gathered by uh, coaches that have been uh, top coaches in the world that have been using HackMotion with their players. So there will be five uh, main topics uh, covering both uh, short game, putting, full swing, and different areas of the game. So let's uh, go ahead. And uh, number one uh, thing uh, that I would like to highlight is that we've learned about different tour player release patterns. And this is a very interesting topic that was uh, covered by Scott Cox a few years ago in the PGA show. Uh, in 2019, he was Canadian Teacher of the Year, and he's coaching from junior to PGA Tour winners. And uh, the presentation was about three common tour releases. And uh, let's get straight ahead. The first is the wrist option A. So that's the most popular, popular pattern. And uh, it has, it's characterized by stable extension, uh, movement towards flexion uh, with uh, some supination. And uh, Tommy Fleetwood is a great example of this pattern. Uh, so we uh, sometimes call it also the Tommy Fleetwood pattern. And uh, once you watch his swing, you can really see how stable his flexion extension is throughout the swing. He doesn't uh, have a lot of changes in those wrist angles. And uh, actually using hack motion data, uh, using the graph view, you can really, really see uh, precisely how smooth his uh, wrist motion is. And the green line just shows uh, the motion, how flat it stays from address to the top. And then there's gradual flexion uh, movement uh, from top to impact. So uh, that's, uh, that's how it looks uh, using hack motion data. And uh, the swing is characterized, uh, sometimes it's uh, called uh, just uh, turn down release or knuckles down. And it's used by a lot of great players like Tommy Fleetwood, Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy. So there's one, uh, one thing that is uh, common to them and that's the release pattern that they use. At the impact, the speed of the club head is released more with wrist rotation, which is also known as supination, rather than wrist extension. And the wrist stays in flexion a little longer. And these players usually are great wedge players, pitchers and chippers, because they learn to control the loft of the club with the amount of flexion that they have. Uh, and this is contrasted with the second type of pattern that uh, wrist option B, which is the flexion to extension. Uh, pattern, uh, also called the DJ pattern sometimes, uh, and sometimes called also cobber pattern. Uh, and it's called cobber pattern because the trail wrist is very, very bent like a cobra curled up there. And uh, this is uh, very, very different. You can see uh, that while the uh, stable flexion extension pattern was going flat, uh, basically from address to the top, this pattern is doing the complete opposite, 100 degrees opposite. It's uh, going down into flexion at the top. And then, uh, then uh, from top to impact, it's again uh, moving uh, from, uh, from flexion to extension. So uh, it's a completely opposite. Uh, and it's uh, almost 100 degree opposite of stable extension pattern. The players who use it uh, are, for instance, Dustin Johnson, Colin Markawa, Victor Hovland, Brooks Kepka. So all of them have this bowed uh, wrist at the top, and then they maintain that flexion throughout the swing. They push their lead wrist into flexion in the backswing, maintain it in the downswing, and then release the flexion at impact. Movement towards extension with very little supination. So uh, that's contrasted with a more rotational, stable extension release uh, of the pattern A. And uh, they tend to play long shots very well. They're great drivers of ball, but they, they, they tend to hit very uniform stock shots. And these players can struggle sometimes with pitching chipping as they deal off the club during backswing and they need to get back, uh, get it back at impact by scooping. It has a potential low point issue. And uh, some coaches have been arguing that maybe Victor Hovland uh, struggles with his short game shots exactly because of his uh, long game pattern, which gives him an advantage in the long game is a, might be a disadvantage in the short game. If you want to learn more about these patterns, be sure to follow uh, Scott Cox. Uh, he's uh, very popular on Instagram at Scott Cox Certified. He has a whole course uh, certification you can take and you can learn about these patterns. But if you just want to get a first glimpse, uh, then uh, check out our 
homepage uh, to post. All, all of this information will be available later after uh, this presentation. Uh, three common tour releases and tour methods of delivery. You can Google that and find it all at uh, hackmotion.com. Uh, number two is the uh, finding how exactly wrist extension is consistency killer. And here important to understand how actually uh, wrist extension and flexion is linked to the club face. And uh, basically it determines the club face direction. You can see this is a nice visual. The more extension you have, or also known cupping, the more open the face is, the ball is gonna go more right. The more flexion you have, uh, the more close the face is, it's gonna go left of the target. So this is uh, very important to understand for players to learn club face control and awareness of the club face. And uh, most amateurs don't have this awareness and they have very unstable uh, uh, extension amount. On the left, you can see a typical amateur pattern for a slicer. So you go to the top and pull down with the hands, uh, open the club face, and it's very, very difficult to control it. It's gonna be an out to in path with open club face and a, a slice. And uh, that's in contrast to a typical pro pattern on the right, uh, the stable extension, that's the wrist option A, uh, where uh, Tommy Fleetwood is uh, has very little changes in his flexion extension. It's very stable. He's controlling the club face. It's uh, squaring up nicely and he's gonna have very high consistency. So those uh, are two opposites. And you can see a player who has worked a bit with hack motion and uh, here's the data. Uh, you can see the red line is uh, before he's made any changes. Uh, the wrist is very extended at the top and the uh, player is adding even more extension. Uh, the red line is going even more up from top to impact. And then it's only uh, decreasing uh, late and it's still very extended. So it's a very flippy uh, swing with a lot of extension. And the green line is contrast after you've uh, worked a bit. Uh, the wrist is less extended at the top and there's decreasing extension in transition. So the ex yes, there's a bit more extension uh, at the top, but it's much, much closer to what it was at address. So these are, uh, this is how hack motion data would look for uh, a, a changed uh, wrist motion pattern. And uh, the good news is that this pro pattern, uh, we've uh, been measuring it and uh, we have actually implemented it also inside the app. So you can learn this pro pattern and uh, that is the wrist option A. So we found what are those ranges that on average uh, players with this pattern have. And uh, we have placed it inside the app as uh, in our club face control mode. Uh, there are those suggested ranges. And uh, you see after every swing, whether you got in the range or outside the range. And if you're outside the range, it shows, for instance, here at the top, 15 degrees outside the range, it also impact plus 10 degrees. So after every swing, you can either get inside or outside the range and uh, you can learn that uh, pattern uh, that the tour players are using. So that's a very good way to learn. And you, after each session, also get a summary, uh, how many you got in the range, how much uh, you got outside the range, and you can track your progress. So this is uh, something we learned what tour players do, and we've implemented it in, in the app as well. Okay, uh, so uh, next up is the lesson number uh, three, which is that uh, pros have increasing trail wrist extension in transition. So this is something that uh, the trail wrist me measurement is something that's available in the um, pro version of the app. And uh, it's very interesting that uh, a lot of coaches are have been measuring it also for pro players. And what, one thing they found, uh, and this is actually findings uh, that were published by Christoph Bausek. He's a European tour coach. Uh, he was presenting yesterday, uh, a very good presentation as well. And a few years ago, he presented his findings on the trail wrist and trail arm in the golf swing. And he found out that measuring his uh, tour players is that they tend to actually increase the amount of trail wrist extension in transition. So you see that the green line is going up. That means that they're extending even more uh, their trail uh, wrist in, uh, in transition. And this is actually very, again, uh, different from the typical amateur pattern, which we can see here. So at the top amateur, at the bottom is the pro. An amateur... Uh, even though starts in some extension. At the top, there is no increase in extension. And there's actually very early release of that extension. The 
green line goes very rapidly downwards. And actually at impact, you can see that it's flexed. So it's like this scooping motion. So that's a typical amateur fault. And then the bottom, again, you see the pro. Yes, he actually started with less extension at address, but at the top, increased it in transition and then maintained it uh, at impact. He still was extended. So uh, has more shaft lean and much more control over the club face. So uh, Christoph also recommended an excellent drill called the trail hand open drill. Uh, he described it in the webinar that you can watch it also on our homepage, just so you avoid uh, the right hand being too dominant controlling the club, you put it open and then you make uh, swings. But uh, take a look at uh, the drill in more detail on our homepage. Uh, here's the link uh, and you can Google that and find it as well. Uh, so next up is number four, uh, the lesson about wedge game and two types of wedge shots you must master. Uh, again, an excellent presentation by uh, two coaches this time. It was uh, Mark Blackburn, which uh, was that year, uh, I think 2020 uh, PGA teacher and coach of the year. And uh, he's coached a lot of tour players as well. And then uh, he was uh, accompanied with Lane Savoy, who's a co-founder of Wedgecraft and also an expert uh, coach, uh, coaching a lot of uh, tour players. And uh, what they found is uh, that there is, uh, you have to master so-called two-sided spin mountain. And uh, those two sides of the spin mountain uh, can be called, there's a green zone and red zone, and they're very different. So the spin mountain here would be characterized, uh, I'll put it on the full screen, uh, on the horizontal axis, you have the loft. So it's increasing loft. And then the green zone is the low launch. So it's lower loft at impact. And on the right, it's higher uh, loft, uh, higher launch. That's the red zone and up is the spin rate. So you can see that there's a low launch has a higher spin rate, while the red area has actually a high launch, low spin. So those are uh, two opposite shots. They, they have different trajectories and different amounts of spin, and a good player has to master both of them. So based on that, the tour players that they've been measuring, uh, they found out uh, how it looks in hack motion data. And all this data is also available in the app. So you can learn from it uh, in the pro version. Uh, for the low launch, uh, high spin shot, usually longer, these uh, low distance wedges, uh, you have to aim for gradual movement towards flexion in transition. So lead wrist is flexing in transition, leading up to impact. You can see how that green line is uh, going downwards uh, up to impact and slowly increasing afterwards. So that creates that long, low launch. And this is contrasted uh, with the other type of shot, which creates high launch. So the green line is going up. And what happens actually, the wrist is extending through impact, which uh, creates a lot of, um, a lot of loft and uh, lower spin rates. So it's called slippage in the spin, uh, spin mountain uh, terms. And uh, that's very, uh, very different from the low launch high spin shot. So both of these shots need to be learned and applied in different uh, uh, situations. And in this case, uh, for the high launch before impact, you, you increase the wrist extension rapidly. So as Mark Blackburn said, it's essential, non-negotiable to have control over the wrist to be a high performer. And using hack motion uh, sensor and the data, you can actually learn these things. So do check out the presentation called The Dynamics of Wedge Play, also published on our homepage, and uh, learn about those two shots. Lastly, uh, it's putting. And what we've uh, been uh, measuring is a lot of tour player and also simple amateur uh, putting strokes. And we found that they're, non, uh, they're functional and non-functional functional putting stroke patterns. And uh, this uh, was a uh, a few years ago, presented by David Orr, uh, who's also a tour putting coach, worked with a lot of great uh, players, for instance, Justin Rose. And he uh, also works at the Flat Stick Academy as an expert putting coach. So he uh, has a stroke pattern that he calls the disaster stroke. Uh, it's the carry and throw pattern. So the player has the intent to keep the putter face square. So what he does is he carries 
it uh, during the backswing and then throws it in the downswing. The trail wrist is moving into flexion. So this trail wrist is doing this, it's flexing and it's adding the loft uh, to the putter face. And you can see it clearly, uh, here's the video. And there's, you can also see the data, how it looks, the flexion of the trail wrist in this case is increasing, it's going downwards. And that's a very, very uh, bad pattern to have. Uh, and it's non-functional. And this is the opposite where you would try to make it more functional. You do the opposite. Uh, and here the intent would be for the player to keep the putter low and uh, the trail wrist would not be moving into flexion, but opposite in extension. And it will be brush and hold type of pattern and the movement in, uh, in the graph is actually opposite uh, instead of moving down, it's moving up, it's extending the trail wrist. So let's contrast uh, these two patterns side by side. On the left is the before, trail hand throw, excessive body motion, swaying. And on the right, uh, afterwards, reduced trail hand throw, separation with slight brush feel. And as David said, he achieved this approximately the change of pattern in one hour, and he's measured it with hack motion as well. So it's an excellent example of how you can uh, learn to make uh, from a disaster stroke, uh, which is very hard to control into a functional putting stroke pattern. So you can learn also about putting uh, from uh, uh, the coaches that have been using hack motion sensor and gathering data. So here are two presentations by David. Uh, one was on the lead wrist, one was on the trail wrist. And on the lead wrist, he's also been uh, gathering uh, data from Brad Faxon, who's uh, probably top 10 putter of all time. And you can check the data also on our, our site as well. Uh, so this is uh, very, very good material to understand better uh, your putting stroke and you can learn hack motion to improve it as well. So that wraps it up. There are five lessons that we've learned with hack motion data. We'll learn many more, but these are top five. First, the different tour player release patterns. You can understand yours and work on it. Uh, you, you can learn to control the extension. Uh, number two, which is the consistency killer, because if you don't have control over extension, it's very hard to control your club face. Uh, the pros have actually increasing trail wrist extension and transition. We can measure that with hack motion as well. Uh, then next, number four, uh, two type of wedge shots you must master. So two sides of the spin mountain and uh, learn to hit both of them and apply when needed. And then uh, last, it's uh, for putting as well, uh, functional versus non-functional putting stroke patterns. Uh, measure your stroke and understand if you have uh, some maybe uh, issues and even pro players have them.